Hello guys, welcome to the seven segment multiplexing tutorial video with Iwang Padi. Now on this video we'll be looking at how you can connect more than one seven segment to your PIC microcontroller and be able to display different values on those seven segments. Right. And then we're going to do that through an example. So our example there says, write an assembly program to increment and display the number on a two digit seven segment display, right? The number should be incremented every second and when it reaches 99, it should reset to zero. So the number is incremented every second. It has to be displayed on a two digit seven segment display. And when it reaches 99, it has to go back to zero, zero, right? because it's a two digit number. Now, how do we get to do that? First of all, it goes to our circuit. How are we going to construct our circuit in such a way that you have two seven segments connected to the peak to make a two digit seven segment? How do we connect that? Typically, this is what I have. I have my seven segments, both of them, the A is connected to B1, the B is connected to B2, C is connected to B3, D, B4, E, B5, F, B6, and G, B7. The A of this seven segment is connected to A of that seven segment. B of that seven segment, they are all connected together, and then uh, collectively they are connected to B1 for A, B2, for B, and so on up until B7 for G, right? Now, these are common cathode seven segments I'm using. So the common lead, instead of directly taking it to ground, I'm going to take it to ground through a transistor. Now, the purpose of this transistor is to either enable or disable the display right because we're going to display on two seven segments using the very same data lines connected to both seven segments if we connect these seven segments directly to ground when i want to display zero it's always going to be displayed on then each, each every number which i want to display will be displayed on both seven segments and that's not what we want we want that if the digit very well to display it's 27 2 must be displayed on the first seven segment, 7 must be displayed on the seven, on the second seven segment, right. Now, how do we do that? With our data lines connected that way. We're going to say, switch off the seven segment. Switching off the seven segment means we disconnect ground. We switch off both this transistor and both this one as well. We switch the two transistors off, meaning the seven segment is not connected to ground. Even though you may be sending data there, that data won't display because the ground, the common lead is not connected. We disconnect it through that transistor by writing logic zero to these select pins. Now, when we switch them off, nothing is displayed. If I want to display two, I'll send information for two through these data lines and then enable only the first one switch on this one so that two is displayed for a fraction of a time switch it off send information for seven and then switch this one on to display seven so basically you will at some point this be displaying one digit and the other one will be off but that process when you do it too fast the i won't catch which seven seven segment is off and which one is on at any point because it's happening too fast it will appear as if they're both all displaying at the same time and you will see a constant two seven if you switch fast between the two seven segments and the data that you are displaying there that's basically the principle and what we are going to do to achieve multiplexing seven segments right so the common leads are connected to ground through resistors so that we can enable or disable the seven segment depending on which data we want to display right now and because we're using common cathode seven segment 
I have the previous table which we did when we look at lookup tables. We are still going to use lookup tables to display on the seven cycle, right? We need to be display values between zero and nine on each seven segment, which will enable us to display zero, zero up to 99, right? So we have one table because both seven segments are connected the same way. We can use the same table for both seven segments, right? So we have one table that displays for us zero to nine. And then these are the values that we're going to use on our lookup table to display on that seven segment. But remember now, the cache is we need one seven segment enabled at a time, and then it's corresponding data sent to port B, right? So that's what we are going to try and achieve so that we can make seven segment multiplexing possible. So let's go and write a program for this. We want to increment every second. And now there must be a two digit display. And then when it reaches 99, it must reset back to zero. That's the idea. So how do we do that in a program? Um, I've created the, a file, an ASM file where we'll be writing our program origin zero zero this is our reset vector right our reset vector and then we go to start or go to initialize or whatever it may be so i'm going to say go to start and then we're going to have start somewhere there. now i want to go and set up my output pins on port b where your um, seven segment is connected. So bit set file, port, no, not port, but status comma RP zero. Now I want all port B pins to be outputs. TF file, trace B, I need to disable analogs, move neutral to W. OX06, move W to file, AD con 1. I've disabled analogs here. Yeah. I don't have any inputs even on port A, so I'm just going to clear file this A as well. Right. Now, now that I've done that, I want to go and display my values on the seven segment. Now bit clear file status comma rp0. Let's say because now I have to increment I need to temporarily save that information or that value in a register and I'm going to create a register which I will name count Oh, because I actually have two bits. I have two registers. One for the tens. It's a register which I'm going to assign to address 20 in the memory organization. And then the other one will be units. And then the units I'm going to equate it to 21. Address 21. So I have those two files. The tens will hold the value that must be on the first seven segments, the units will hold the value that must be on the second seven segment. Right. Now, what am I going to do? Let me assume that we are starting at zero. So I'm going to clear file, tens, and clear file, units. Right, I'm starting at zero. Now, Okay, let's say this will be my main program. At this point, I want that zero zero displayed on the two seven segments. I want that zero zero displayed on the two seven segments. Now, this A, I have A6 and A7 as my select pins. So when we look here at the second diagram, Pin A6, RA6 
is the output controlling the first seven segment and RA7 is the output controlling the second seven segment, enabling or disabling that particular seven segment. Right. Now, I'm going to make use of these RA6 and RA7. And initially, also, let me assume that the two seven segments are off. So, clear file instead of just clearing those two individually i'm just going to clear the whole of part a so both seven segments are off now i want zero zero to be displayed right at the beginning so this is what i'm going to do because they are both off i'm going to use a lookup table we need to have a lookup table so our lookup table I'm not going to explain the lookup table because we had a video on lookup tables. I'm going to assume that by now you know that. Return literal to W. So I'm going to use those values we get on the table. So for zero, what is the value that must that we must return with? Seven E it's for zero one it's zero c so we go and say return with seven e for zero return with a value zero c zero x zero c for one we return with a value we need to return with a value for Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right. So we need to figure out or find out what those values are and then put them there. All right. Now, let's go back to the table and see for two and three, what must be the value? The value is. B six nine E so for two will be B six for three will be nine E and then we go and look for for its C C D A F A C C D A F A so we have C C D A F A then we are left with the last three zero E F E C E zero E F E C E so we go and say now zero E X F E OXCE. I hope those are correct. Yes, zero E F E C E. Now our table is complete. Right. Now, what is it that we want to do? We want to at the beginning we want to display tens first. So we'll say move file. Tens can hold any value between zero and nine. Obviously, it's starting at zero, so we move that into W. We call look up, and then that value we move it to move W to five. Port B save into okay, no, port B that's it. And now we need to enable the first seven segment that displays the tens. Right, so we say bit set file port a comma six or r a six. Now, what this means is that we have taken a value that is intense, we fetch the representative 
for from the lookup table and when we move that to port b we're actually moving data to display whatever is intense we want to display it into the seven segment we need to enable that particular seven segment so we enable that seven segment by setting bit six so when we say bit set file bit six initially they are both off so when we set this one it switches the transistor on connecting this common cathode seven segment to ground and then displaying whatever the data sent to port b and in this case whatever is in the tens is the one that's going to be displayed we need to display this for a brief period of time very short period of time and then from there we change to the second one so for now this is what i'm going to do after display on the first seven segment i'm going to say call delay i'm going to call this delay and let's just say i'm going to make this a one millisecond delay one millisecond delay meaning i'm waiting one millisecond after waiting one millisecond i need to clear to disable that first seven segment bit clarify port a comma r a six disabling this one now fetching the value for units move file units into w and then call look up to get the value that will display on a seven segment and move that value to port b move w to find port b but now this is for units so i need now to read set file port a r a seven I am enabling port RA7. After enabling port RA7, I also have to display it for a brief amount of time, which I will call the very same delay. Delay. Right. So remember, this will be a one millisecond delay. And after that one millisecond delay, I need to disable this second seven second. Port A R A seven. I haven't done any incrementation. So go to main. This is just display. This is just display on the seven segment, right? And now at this stage, uh, my tens and units they have zero zero. I haven't done any increment, right? Let me try and build this and see if I'm going to successfully build without pens okay it says it doesn't know what delay is because i haven't generated or declared what the delay is now assuming that this delay is going to be a one millisecond delay i'm just going to say delay no operation and then return but i want you to assume that it's a one second one millisecond delay for simulation purposes i'm just going to make use of that sample instruction now when i build it this time around it should be giving me any issues build successful let me try and simulate that and see if um i can make it work i need to set up my seven segments so i go to seven segment panel now on the seven segment panel set up the first seven segment my a is port b one and so on but this seven segment must be enabled through port a six right so it is enabled by the io on port a six the transistor connected to port a six the second seven segment this must be a must be the same as that one so it must be b1 here this must be b2 three B four second this must be B four that B five this B six and this B seven okay the decimal point or the age I don't really care about but now this second seven segment must be controlled by A seven because it's our second seven segment 
So let me hide it. Go to load. I want to load a program under multiplexing. I've saved this program under multiplexing. So browse to multiplexing. Load this X file. Then start with my simulation. You see there, it's doing so fast that um, it is zero zero, but the simulator doesn't show it as a constant zero zero, right? It is only on your hardware that you will be able to display the zero zero. But what you can see is that there's on off shift between A6 and A7, which enables individual displays. This place, these displays are never on at the same time, but they switch on and off between each other so fast that your eye won't catch. You will only see a constant zero zero right now that's basically how we multiplex but now i haven't i've done the multiplexing i haven't done the counting it said the question said we must be able to display zero zero up to ff using a two digit and then that value must be incremented at one second interval that's what I'm going to try and do now. Increment at one second. But now, my main code is busy here dealing with multiplexing. The main code is busy dealing with multiplexing. How can I add the counting part on top of that? Because I cannot wait one second. Because when I wait one second, that is going to affect the multiplexing part. Right. Switching between the two seven seconds. So, for me to do the count at one second interval, I'm going to use the timer zero interrupts to generate an interrupt every one second. And every one second, I can go and increment the values, right? So from the timer zero uh, tutorial video, we knew or we found out that we need to set our prescaler to one is to 256 by moving 07 into the option register option register and we also know that we need 16 interrupts 16 interrupts to get one second right and we also have to always reload 12 into our timer zero. Zero C must be moved into our timer zero. And now we must have 16 interrupts. So I'm going to have 16 saved into a register called count. But now I need to clear now count because count it's also another general purpose register and remember we said general purpose registers they start at address 20 so count is going to be our next general purpose register now at 22 in exodus 22 now i can use the name count because i've declared it there now we need also not to enable timer zero interrupts which we did on our previous video by moving nine Next, the decimal nine zero, no, no, not nine actually, a zero into the int con register. Move w to five in con. Here we are enabling our timer zero interrupt. Right. Here we enable timer zero. interrupts right so this is our count to get 16 counts now when we get an interrupt what happens there must be origin 04 whenever you're using interrupts you must have origin 04 in your program the interrupt vector origin 0x04 i will say here go to interrupt service routine go to interrupt service routine and then my interrupt service routine, I'm going to put it just under the lookup table. So my interrupt service routine, because we are for now only using timer zero interrupt, 
whenever an interrupt takes place, then it means I know time as zero interrupt must have taken place. Right. So with that said, I have to always reload six oh no not six twelve zero C into my timer zero. I have to clear the interrupt flag. We clear file int on timer zero interrupt flag and now check if this was the 16th interrupt by saying decrement file skip if zero that file will be count save into form if this is not the 16th interrupt just return from it but if it is the 16th interrupt now you need to reload that 16 back to count move that 16 into w move w to file count and now here it's then that we can increment because we know now that we have achieved one second interval in every one second interval we must go and increment our values remember now in terms of de uh, decimals we need to increment the count the units and check if they are greater than nine if your units are greater than nine they go to zero and then your tens are incremented so i'm going to say now increment file increment file units save the results into but now I need to check if that unit has exceeded nine. So I'm going to say move file units into W. There's many ways I can I, I can search. I can check if it is equals to ten. If it is equals to ten, then I'm going to equate it to zero. Because if it is equals to ten, then it must go to zero and then they tens must be incremented or i can check if it is nine or less so to check if it is 10 i'll just subtract 10 from it subtract a value from w remember i just moved what is in units i moved it into w so when i subtract 10 0 a that's 10 right when i subtract 10 from w i'm actually subtracting 10 from what was in units if they are equal the zero bit will be set bit test file skip if that is set status comma the zero bit if the zero bit is set it means unit has 10 in it and it must be cleared but if it is not if the zero bit is not set it means unit doesn't have 10 it has anything less than 10 it is fine we can return from interrupt but if unit is equals to 10 Units must be cleared. Clear file. Units it must go to that to zero. But now we now to now need to increment file tens. Right, save into file. Now the tens must also not exceed nine. The tens must also not exceed nine because when it gets to nine, it must go back to zero. Ninety-nine go back to zero. So what do we do is we move file, whatever is in tens. Let's now read it and check if it is equals to 10. By either subtracting or exclusiving or, but I can use subtract for this case, 0a, bit test file, skip if, bit test file, skip if, set. Status still the zero bit. If the zero bit is not set, I can return from interrupt because it, it says now tens doesn't have 10 in it, meaning just anything less than 10. But if it is equals to 10, I need to clear it so that it starts from zero. Clear file, tens, and after clearing file tens, I can still return from interrupt. Now, this will happen every one second. Um let's build it build 
and see how it's going to be simulated. So if I load this multiplexing stack, for, for some time it's going to stay zero zero because in real time, it has not been one second. It's still in microseconds. When that gets to one, so it's 0 0.7, 0 0.8, one. So we should be having a zero one displayed on the seven segment. Why is it still zero zero? Okay, let me check why is it still zero zero. It's supposed to be displaying zero one by now. One second must have lapsed. So what did I do? Set this to 256. Load that, load the offset. Initialize the interrupts. Clear, clear, clear that. And now just use the lookup table. And then move five minutes into the game. Call with your table. Move to port three. Set this call. Okay. So the main program is right. What's not happening here? We clear file count time is zero. Decrement file skip is zero. Move 16 into count which is still 5, now increment, save into 5, this is 5, why is it not displayed, the program looks perfectly fine, I'm wondering why it's not displaying as it's supposed to be, mm. Let me report. And every interrupts was correct. Reading this for the first time. And then and all of that. So now that's a one. Okay, it's taking too long demonstrate one second that's one i'm going to reduce that time it's actually yeah it's actually one second you see that is one it's been one second but it's going to take too long to get to that one to that other second so that it displays two there's nothing wrong on the program it's been one second it's just that the simulator is running uh, slowly and it can show you here the equivalent real time that is 1.1 second it's only now is approaching 1.2 seconds it's going to take too long so i'm going to reduce my second interval instead of loading 16 let me load one so instead of expecting 16 interrupts i'm just going to go with one i'm just trying to do to, to make this faster so that the simulation can pick it up and demonstrate it So let me load this new, now it will still take some time, but it will take 16 times less than what it was doing. So that is one now, it's going to change to two. You see that's zero two. It's going to change to 3, and then up until it changes to 10, right? So that's going to be 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, up until 10, 11, 12, up until 99, back to 0, 0. So that's 0, 3. So the counting happens after a certain time, which in real time will be 1 second, when you build the second and put that 16 back there. For simulation purposes, it's taking some time but you can see it displays zero four and then on a build second when that is built and then demonstrated 
it will happen so fast that your i will see as if it's a constant 0, 05, constant 0, 06, 0, 07, up until 99. So that's basically how we cascade seven segments, how we multiply seven segments. Now, the one second delay here, this one second delay, we can either call a delay, which we generate and then it becomes a one second delay, either using a loop delays to, to, to make your one second delay, or you can use timer one, perform timer one calculations and then use timer one for your one second delay. Right. And now that not one second, one millisecond. If this time, if this delay is too big, if this delay that you call here is too big, I'm going to see the difference. I'm going to see one digit at a time. But if that delay is around one millisecond or even less sometimes, I won't see a flickering on off on the seven segments. I will see a constant number that says 10. See now our count has reached 10. We will see 11 and 12, a constant number if this delay between the display is short enough. Right. But if you make it too big, if you make it one second, I will see one and two on the other side. I will see them as individual numbers, not as a, a 12. Right. Now, guys, that actually concludes how we can uh, multiplex seven segments. The other way around is, instead of doing this here, this thing of switching between the seven segments, we can make use of timer one to generate a one millisecond interrupt using timer one. And now when we get a one millisecond interrupt, we can then take this code in the interrupt service routine and then use it under the timer one interrupt service routine. Then we won't have to write the whole code and then generate those delays by pulling them there. The interrupt will be our delay generator and then we just go into the interrupt to switch between our seven segments. Right. Try and put more seven segments or display different things on the two multiplexed or three multiplexed seven segments. Uh, good luck with that. Enjoy.